Our personality today needs no introduction. I'm talking about Kofi Otter Dako, K-O-D. He's been in media for over 24 years. He's owned his own record label at some point. He runs his own clothing line right now. And we're going to be talking to him about his life, the journey he's been on, lessons he's learned. And if you have any questions for him, let us know with the hashtag Breakfast Daily and the WhatsApp line 0550 -585832. If you're outside Ghana, just use the country code plus two three three and we will receive all your messages. Good morning. Good morning. How, How are you are doing? You? I'm good. How are you? Uh, staying alive. How has 2020 been? Oh God. Uh, it's, it's been a turbulent year for all of us. I mean, um, with COVID, the very special people we've all lost, yeah. you know, as a country, as individuals and uh, job losses. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. It's 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 been a crazy year, but uh, some of us are, are still here, yeah. and um, we we thank God for His love and protection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about your life. Yeah. Where did you grow up? How was life like as a child? I, I was born in, at Winneba, you know, in 1978. My my father was um, head of prisons there. Uh, we moved to Kumasi, I think, a year after, mm -hmm. and then came to Accra. Wow. Um, grew up around um, cantonments, and uh, my father was promoted uh, to become a director of prisons. So. We moved from Cantonments to Ridge, hmm. I think Ridge in 1983, thereabout. Okay. Um, lived there till about 1992 when he retired. Hmm. And then we went to um, Taifa. Okay. Hmm. How was life like with your mom and dad? Ah, it was amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm the last of seven. The age difference between the last one and I, I think it's about um, um, 11 years. Wow. You know, so I was very, I was very pampered. I was pulled. I was that little boy i never had to go to the kitchen for anything and to date <laughs> i think apart from preparing my coffee in the morning um i can't do much even that really? my, my girls are are <laughs> going to prepare my coffee for me so i don't have to do it in the morning yeah and um that affected me much later How? you know when i i traveled out of town exactly <laughs> uh, you travel out of um gh and you're on your own and you can't live that way because you'd have to cook sometimes you so know? how so, did you learn to cook oh, later I, i'd call my mother sometimes you're joking i'm serious it should actually have the time oh, she had the time for me Aww. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, really i think um sometimes we we think we are pampering our children by not letting them work but then it actually goes a long way to affect them yeah as a father it's something that i I don't encourage. I'm really tough. No, I'm really, really tough on my children. I don't want them to become anything that I have grown up to become in terms of um, spending time in the kitchen, and especially being women. I have two girls. Yeah. Yo, they need to be on top of their game. But how do you make sure that you're not too tough on them? Um, too tough. Listen, man, we, we grew up in a very tough way. And I think that it, it's affected us psychologically in terms of how we, we deal with things in, in low tides. Yeah. And um, that's the kind of woman I want them to become, you know. Mm. Yeah, tough love is important, <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, I, I've actually had an experience where my daughter faltered and I, 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 I spanked her. Mm -hmm. And I went into the room to cry. Why? I felt that, like I love this girl so, so you much. Have yeah, her. but well, sometimes you could have just no, to her. I've done enough of that. She but needed, a, she needed a lesson. But how, what if she interprets it the wrong way? Because we are in no, a but different generation. When you're generation. done, when they they find out they faltered mm -hmm. and um, were actually spanked as a result of that, you know, you have a conversation about you know you did this wrong. We had a conversation several times and you didn't budge, so you know I had to do this. Mm. Don't repeat it. It sinks in more. So as a parent, where do you learn these skills from? I don't know, it just comes with your own personal experiences in life, um, you know, how you were brought up, um, you know, also making sure that you communicate very well with the little ones, it, it's essential. Yeah. yeah. How was SS days like for you? Um, um, I didn't do SS, I was part of the last batch, so we called it secondary school. Okay. Uh, it, was, it was amazing. I um, started at Harvard, I, I was 11 years, okay. you know, and... Um, uh, in um, Kukumlimli, I think it was one of the, my favorite it? my favorite places. Um, one of your 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 team members here was um, was my senior. He You're was kidding. he was one year ahead of I me. I hope he didn't give you a hard time. The guy had the, the badgiest, <laughs> you know, pants in he school, and changed. his own style of walking was different. <laughs> Yeah, we, we had some amazing people like Sydney, you know, uh, I think Jackie Aki Apia came around for a very short time. Um, um, Kokui was my wow. classmate 
for about about a year and um, she was my childhood crush as well oh my god yes yes, yes. and we live in the same neighborhood so there were times we'd go home together did you ever tell her when you were kids many years later but you couldn't tell her yeah. as a, oh no as a no no no, no i was too Why? shy i was just happy to see her sometimes you know sit by her <laughs> so as a teenager how did you deal with those emotions and um, feelings well, I mean, it's, it's, it's part of growing up. We, I had friends who were much older. Mm. And, um, you know, you'd hear a lot of naughty things from them. But then again, you, you had your mom at home stepping on your toes all the time and telling you to do the right thing. So, mm. yeah. Your mom sounds like a feminist. Uh, my mom was a very tough woman, you know, very, very tough. Um, um, she um, was one of those ladies who got married when she was, I think, only 17 years old. Uh, 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 f my f first sister, um, self-taught, hmm. um, you know, hard work that macola selling cloth, you know, at a certain point, I'm sure she even sold charcoal before, you know, um, um, at a certain point, establishing uh, a school in, in, in Taifa, mm -hmm. you know, much later after my father retired, had a bakery in the 19. Wow. 80s and 90s, you know, empowered a lot of women, you know, when um, the whole 31st December women's movement thing yeah. started, you know, she was part of it. And um, um, empowering you, women and also you know, establishing all these crash around um, different parts of the country. What values did you learn from her? To be consistent, never give up, you know, you need resilience to, to make it to the top. I mean, it's a very competitive world. And um, as uh, the population increases. Look at the number of radio stations and TV stations we have now. It wasn't like that in 1996. So mm -hmm. if you were, if you had the wow factor, you could have a place and mm -hmm. shine. Mm -hmm. But now you need to do extra. You need to put in so much. And as a result, most people would do a lot of crazy things just to, for, for okay. prominence, to stand out, which we didn't, you know, have to experience. You, had, you only had to do your work and do it right. Yeah. That's, you know, one of the things I, I learned from my mother. Let's talk about your media journey. Yes. Your first day at work. Ooh. Um, this is what happened. So in my teens, one of the things I did whenever I was on vacation was to sell cassettes okay. at a shop owned by Daddy Lumba in Accra Central. Okay. And uh, when we're done, we, you know, with account of Father Dixon and Despite, the same old Despite <laughs> that we know, um, Ado Kaishi. So that got me to know quite a number of people in the music industry because they distributed a lot of music. Mm -hmm. Then um, my uh, distant relation, KKD, mm -hmm. obviously was someone that everyone looked up to. Mm -hmm. You know, most young people. He was a, that iconic tower in the, in the Ghanaian media landscape. And I was privileged to have him as family. Mm -hmm. um, so I started working at his company, KDS, which saw the birth of Sunshine Radio. As a, as a copywriter mm -hmm. and um, a production assistant on his TV show called KKD45 in the, in the 90s. I think I was probably about 16 years then. 16? Yeah. And, um, that, we're looking at you here. When, when was this? Let me see that. Uh, oh, this must have been in 19... Um, 19... Where were you going? 80... Yeah. I mean, <laughs> listen, we, we, I, I grew up at Ridge. I grew up in an era, post-revolution era. Uh -huh. You know, and so you, had you were inspired like, by their fashion Yeah, yeah, statement. yeah. Inspired by my father, inspired by, you know, the tough leader we had back in the day. Um, but then you still Rollins. couldn't tell the girls you have crushes on that you like them. I know, you look like I know, a... I know. I, I look tough, but you look tough. there was, a, there was a, 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 soft, a soft side of me. Exactly. Okay. You know. Go ahead with KKD. Yeah, and um, so one day in 1997, after Radio Gold had been established, I was taking a drive with um, Daddy Lumba in town, and we heard that Radio Gold needed presenters. Mm. They literally drove me there. Wow. Yeah, I went to have a chat with Kweku Boafwajima, who was, um, I think, the general manager or head of programs there. Mm -hmm. We had a conversation. I think a few days later, I had a job. Were you? But the first day, I was nervous. <laughs> that was, was the question starting. I was going Why I were was, you nervous? I, I was nervous, you know, being around all these people <laughs> that I, I listened to all the time. You know, Sefa Kai, Kweku Boafwajima himself was very tough on me. <laughs> um, Shelly Frimpon Manson, oh, then wow. Dead Radio, BB Menson, The Virus, and the rest of them, you know. So, uh, Fifi Banson, being mm. in that space, I thought, okay, you know, like, why am I here? 
At that time, did you know what you wanted to do with your life? Oh, I always knew what I wanted to do with my life. The okay. first time I entered a radio studio, I think I was about seven years, mm -hmm. there was a lady, a friend of my dad, called Emilia Cromwell Adama okay. at GBC. She had a, a, a show for kids, so mm -hmm. she invited me to look around. And then I said, this is what I'd want to do when I grow up. My what mother did you like hated about it. it. Oh, your I liked mom the environment. hated it? Yeah, she, like, you want to grow up to become a public toy. That's exactly how she put it. Like, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, God. public toy. Everyone wants to have a bit of you. No, Aww. you become a doctor or something. Like, but nah, you didn't no, want no, to. No, no, what no, did you no. like about I was, being I, in the media I, space? I, I would have ended up as an artist or a musician or everything that I am. I was definitely going to be in the arts. Why? Because you're coming know. from your mom is been part of me from your day dad one. has been in the I don't even know, but space I, I just know that when we're growing up, whenever we're baking bread at home, there'll be a lot of singing. Mm -hmm. and, and then my parents were, my, my, my older siblings were actually part of the old um, Winnie by Youth Choir. Wow. You know, so I think music has always been, been, been part of us somehow. Hmm. Yeah, and I definitely was going to end up uh, as everything space. that I, I am. Yeah, yeah. And at some point, you had your own record label. How yes, was that I, like? I think um, at twenty four. Yes, before twenty four, I, based on my experience with um, Daddy Lumba and also knowing all these musicians, after he recorded the Foreign Ponce's first album in nineteen ninety nine, mm -hmm. um, well, they parted ways after. Yeah. And um, before we didn't know a lot of people in the industry, I'd been working for, I think about maybe some four years already mm -hmm. in the media landscape and knew my way around. So um, I started managing him and also looking beyond him mm -hmm. to find other um, um, uh, musicians. There was this guy called Max Kofi who lived in, in Sweden. We did his first album together with Black M Sounds owned by um, Rich Osekufo, who he owns a radio station, Rock FM in, in Takarade. Mm -hmm. um, um, I helped my brother Marco Kwekumante with Slip Music wow. right here in Adabraka back in the day uh, when he, he signed Darcy Bridge, I mean, I and um, Lord King and the rest of them came aboard. And it was very easy to juggle working on radio and doing these things because you know, you're connected to all the radio stations nationwide. Your mm -hmm. friends would definitely play your, play your music for you. Yeah. you know, it would help in, in projecting your music. And after Fori, um, Darcy Bird came along for management together with Fred Nyama. Uh, 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 then many years later, Wuta, mm -hmm. um, through Nescafe African Revelations, we, wow. we discovered them. I managed um, prior as well. I was their first manager. What does it take to manage a talent? You, you need to understand what they're doing. You know, you need to understand the terrain. I think you need a lot of music in yourself. You, you know, in it. It needs to be in it. I, I am a very musical person. I just don't own a voice, but mm -hmm. on any given day, I, I can dish out. You, you do play <laughs> yeah, I play the drums. Oh, wow. Yeah, Where did you drums. learn it? Uh, just listening to it. It needs to sound like this. Mm. So I play. That's how it started for me. So in your early days in radio, how did you differentiate yourself from all the big giants that were in the space? Um, I think everyone saw me as their little baby. I was so fortunate. And you, you know? used to be in a little yeah, baby. Yeah, I was, I was a baby. You've seen some of the clothes. I, 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 I look very funny in some of the things I wore. <laughs> but I, I was welcome everywhere. I'd go to Joy FM and I was like one of them, Aww. you know. Um, I'd go to uh, Groove FM. Daddy Bosco saw me as a li his little brother. Samens has been my my brother not even my boss my big brother big brother figure for many years you know it's 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 always been like that so i i was welcome everywhere i went to wow but that at what point made me you... very comfortable in in the in the media landscape at what point did you say i need to figure out how to monetize this because when things are happening you know i think it, it came with it career. because um somehow before um the first ghana music awards mm -hmm. i was part of the team that you know birthed um, Ghana Music Awards, and um, I think that's where and when being paid started. Yeah. You know, because then, apart from whatever you earned at the radio station, I never took payola because mm -hmm. I was involved in in nurturing musicians and yeah. also playing uh, uh, or producing musicians. So mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't have to take mm -hmm. other people's money. No, no, I couldn't. Yeah. I, 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 and based on the people I had around me, you know, if you worked with um, people like. Um, Kweku Bofwajman and KKD, they, they teach you, Kwame Sefaka, and they teach you not to do it right. Okay, yeah. Why should you take money from someone to play the music? You know? yeah. So these things um, motivated me to, to do the right thing and also know that, listen, it's, it's not a joke. This is what you've decided to do and you need to monetize it. Yeah. So you'd get paid for hosting your 
um, Ghana Music Awards. I was a red, first red carpet host. Wow. I think then we called How it yellow carpet. Like oh, it was amazing. You know, like um, the very first one, um, having all these industry giants come out and you're the one talking to them. It wasn't like having two hosts on the red carpet. It was mm -hmm. just me. Wow. You know, I, I, I couldn't get some of those pictures, but I looked very funny in my suits back then. <laughs> I'm sure we, know, can, yeah. we can imagine you looking <laughs> funny. <laughs> you know, and um, deciding not to look back, just keep striving for success and... That's exactly what I always wanted to do. That's been my mantra from day one. So we're going to talk about your decision to move out of Ghana in 2002. Uh, but if you guys have any, have any questions for KOD, let us know. The hashtag is Breakfast Daily. And the WhatsApp line is 0550 If you're outside Ghana, just use the country code plus 233. So here you are, gifted mm -hmm. young man. You mm -hmm. have a career in the media space. Why did you decide to leave the country? I think it's um, something that a lot of um, Africans go to. Um, we, we see life in the West. I call it a masquerade. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's, it's a make-believe life. You think that you can go for greener pastures out there. But there's a good side to it. Okay. I think um, one of the things I probably learned from being out there is being punctual. Mm -hmm. I, I sent a text to your producer that I'm never late. Mm. I, don't, I don't have real time. If it's... Um, 5.15 for you, mine is about 5.45. I'm good. always ahead. You know, I don't even um, 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 save my time according to everyone's time. It's totally different. That's I good. make sure I'm not late. That's, that's where I think I learned that, apart from um, having a father who, was, who worked in the you know, security service, because they are it's very punctual. Very, yeah. Exactly. You need that um, and also knowing that um, we, can, we can make it happen here. But what was going through your mind before you traveled? I thought I was what going you for was all the happen? best things in the world. Everything that I saw on TV. <laughs> you know, everything that I saw on TV. And, you know, your friends would come back from holidays Buggers. and make you feel like, yo, <laughs> there's nothing happening you. for you. You know, like, yo. You, you. <laughs> it was a great experience for me. I, 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 I was working on you a pilot radio a station. Model, right? that I, I guess I, I thought so. Because I've always had this fashion thing going on. And um, I ended up as a security man. How humbling was that? It was very humbling, but I loved my job. Mm -hmm. I loved how I dressed to work. You know, it was in all black, black mm -hmm. suit, black tie. And I, I was working in the city. Mm -hmm. I was working in um, um, Kensington, I think later on, working mm -hmm. for Paul Smith as a security man. Hmm. And um, one day, my boss went like, because I was very active on the, on the shopping floor, the yeah. shop floor. At, help even customers, though even though the security, guy. I'd help customers. But then again, I had an experience many years in Ghana. Okay. I was a shop assistant at a company called Adiva Shed Shop in, um, um, I think, around around Accra Girls. Wow. Yeah. So I'd worked as a shopping assistant. It wasn't new to So it wasn't new all. to me. So one day my boss went like, um, you know, when you live abroad and you don't have your papers, you work with someone's. <laughs> Someone's papers. Did they mention a different yeah, name? Yeah, different name. My name was Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, I was using a crazy. I was using a crazy's papers. So crazy. How did you do it? Well, that? I when, doubt when it. Once I, once I got into that space, I knew my name was Crazy. So you never forgot. No, no, no. I, no, no, no. So crazy. Did they ever organize like a surprise birthday party for Crazy? <laughs> that happened a few times. How did you handle that, it? Well, every day is a special day, so why not? Just go with the flow. So um. But like you know, you're very smart on the on the shopping floor, and um, you help the customers a lot. Don't you want to retire or resign as a security man and get hired by Paul Smith? I'm Aww. like, I'm all for it, and that's yeah. something I always wanted, really. Wow. That was my last job, and then um, occasionally, apart from working on the pirate radio station at the weekend, mm -hmm. I'd go around people like Teddy Ose, who mm -hmm. is um, one of the founding members of CBSA. Yeah. And one day he just went like, you know, Kofi. Some of us grew up here, and we've been here for a long time. We've always wanted to go home. Yeah. You still have an opportunity to go back home and do something better with yourself. Clink. That's it. That was it. Wow. I decided to come back. And luckily, Radio Good was still there for me to embrace me hmm. when I got back. So I think the following week, I was back on the radio. But then again, I also did something. I kept a certain relationship with my friends like William Esiedu who mm -hmm. worked in the media space. Mm -hmm. So if I was working or hosting an event, a Ghanaian event, it was in the media here. So I wasn't wow. totally lost. So you were still connected so to I was the still Ghanaian diaspora, to the Ghanaian, even, there. Even, even the Ghanaian it's, community. Wow. And it wasn't as, as um, big as things are. I mean, graphic was still mm -hmm. um, everything that it, it is. And we didn't have that many um, um, newspapers. So if you had some of your friends 
dropping stories for you still made you relevant within How the, important are those relationships? Those relationships are very important. I mean, that's, you, no man is an island. Mm -hmm. And um, um, the kind of person that would just walk up to you and if I've always admired you, I'll just let you know. Mm -hmm. I think you're very smart and very good at what you do. You're someone I've admired for many, many years and I want to get to know you. I want to know what makes you wow, what makes mm -hmm. you take, what makes you um, everything that you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it helps. 18 years at Radio Gold. Yeah, I was a baby. Did you think you would be there for that long? What kept you for that long? Um, when Mr. Bafaboni, you know, who's one of the owners of Radio Gold, saw me for the first time, I was like, what's this baby doing here? You know, but then he said, I'd give him an opportunity. He's going to grow into it. You know, uh, he's, he's one of those that I'm very much indebted to. And um, we have a father and son relationship, mm. even, even until now. Um, I think also dressing very well helped me. Mm. How? The way you carry yourself, you know, has an effect on how people relate to you. Mm. I was very young. But then also knowing that I worked in a space where most of them were maybe like 10 years older than me, I had to carry myself with dignity, uh, with respect, respecting them and also earning it in return. Mm -hmm. And that also really, really um, 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 propelled me to become everything that, that I've become in life. What were some of your highlights at Radio Gold? Um, I think I'm, I, was, I was one of the only few people who did every show. Yeah, from working at midnight, you know, which I kind of enjoyed because once the radio station closed, we would just drive straight to um, Glens. Mm -hmm. It's not too far from here at Abraka, and hang out with the boys, Reggie Rockstone, DV, and, um, 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 you know, DJ Black and the rest of them, you know, so we'd hang out. So if I close at 1 a.m. straight from radio, go to Adabraka. Wow. And um, apart from sports, because I'm not really big on that, mm -hmm. I, I did everything from the morning show to you know, mid-morning, lunchtime, everything. Wow. Yeah. So we're gonna and I worked there for about 18 years. That's a long time. Yeah, 18 years before leaving to, to join EIB. So we're talking about EIB. We have some messages here. Okay. Kwame CJ says, Boss KOD, you'll be too much. Bless you. I just did love you, pass. Yes, you um, Watching you, Bra Kofi. This is coming from Kwabena. Hi, Jifa. Please ask KOD about his fashion sense and what inspires that. So, your fashion sense. Um, I, I told you my mom had a place on Makola, so she sold fabrics. Mm -hmm. And um, she was one very stylish woman. Um, I started reading GQ at a very young age. What did you like about it? I don't know. I, th I thought it looked nice. You know, men dressing very well. And I decided to replicate it. I didn't have money to buy anything expensive. I'd make my way to, um, was it Cantamanto? Yeah, TS. Cantamanto. TS, where, you know, if you wanted Calvin Klein, you'd get the original one there. <laughs> at a lower <laughs> price. I, at a lower price, you <laughs> know. Is it first selection? Great, <laughs> first selection, I'd go very early. What time would you get Yeah, there? I'd go around 6 o'clock. <laughs> And the guys, the guys like me. Whenever I made my way there, I became one of them. I actually helped them sell. Wow. Bless uh, his soul. There was a guy called Kwame Zevi. I still mm -hmm. remember him. You know, he, he moved on about three years ago. Once wow. I got there, I was a sales boy. Wow. At TS. I was selling from every, every shack, every um, rack. I'd help them sell. And, you know, I'd go get a very good discount. Wow. By, by being there. So, and that's why you, you, you there's a lot of style at, at Tema Station. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about deciding to own your own clothing. Right? Yes. How that's going. Um, when, when I was done with my secondary school education, one of the things I wanted to do was to learn to sew. Okay. Because um, whenever I sat with a tailor, I'd show them how I wanted my clothes made. Mm -hmm. So I thought, ah, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Or, you know, yeah. you know, when you're done with your. O levels, for instance, you have that, I think, about three months or so before mm -hmm. um, um, Move on mo moving on. And I failed my O level math, so You're I had joking. to reset that. Yeah, yeah. Why? I mean, I was an art student, so I thought I didn't need math too. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't focus on that. Yeah. You know, I was interested Any in advice your, for the uh, art students who no, are taking math? I mean, seriously? I tell them all the please, please. <laughs> you need, you you need, need to be an all rounder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I focus on just reading, reading, and being very conscious of speaking well. Mm -hmm. I didn't care about calculating. I still don't count my money. 
Hey, yeah. but then how does that My help wife you? likes it because then she gets to count it for me. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> At least there's a balance Exactly. There. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, yeah, if, if you're an art student, you need to be an all-rounder. You, yeah. you don't have to uh, focus in, in an area. Hmm. What was clothing, I saying before that? Clothing line. Clothing line. <laughs> yes. So um, then I, I had friends like uh, Kofinti, mm -hmm. Kwesinti, uh, Maoli Okujato, um, the late great um, Kofi Ansa, I'd sit with these guys and whenever they made clothes for me, it was based on how I wanted it. Yeah. Kofi Ansa, for instance, would insult me. Kofi Awe, Abwa, Yenyenede, Awodesh, and them, you know, but then he was teaching me. So one, when I decided to start 1957, I was like, eh, I'll sign I said, I called him, Uncle Kofi, Uncle Kofi, I mean, you know me, I've always liked this, so let's go. It's like, so what kind of name are you going to give it? Like, okay, I believe in liberation. I love coming Chroma down to the marrow. I think that I am a very liberated person fashion-wise. Mm -hmm. So in thinking about liberation and Ghana's independence and everything that it represents, let me go for, I can't call it Ghana. I can't call it Gold Coast. So let me use our independence here. Wow. And not write it in 1957 as it is, but mm -hmm. um, 19 in letters yeah. and then 57 in, in, in numbers. How has the journey been? Ooh. You're doing it full time. Doing it full time now. I think I was a bit distracted when um, I was juggling working in the media and um, doing 1957. There were times I had to travel out to go get fabrics and I mean you're working on the radio, you have a boss, yeah, leave, yeah. like you can't leave. You know, so for the longest time I was wondering how was I going to do this? How was I going to pay attention? But then in also working in the media, it also helps. helped yeah. in terms of projecting um, um, what I did with my clothing brand. Mm -hmm. uh, aside the clothing brand, 1957 also saw the birth of Rhythms on the Runway. That's about 10 years now. I mean, the first edition was to outdoor my a clothing line for my, my daughter. Wow. You know, and it's evolved to become a family event. And I always wanted it to have a national appeal and a pan-African one. Hmm. You know, so this year, for instance, um, on the night, there was no clothes for myself. There was none for my wife or my sister-in-law. We had the industry coming together to have a, wow. um, um, an event. And we called it 100% GH because we couldn't even have other designers from different parts of the world How to be part of it. How important is it to pay it forward the way that the three To pay for it? Yeah, pay it forward and give other people a chance to shine. I, 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 I think that the sky is very wide and we always see new stars, you know, we, we can all grow together. We can hold our hands and, and, and develop. We can hold our hands together and, and get to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, my biggest worry was if industry people saw it as KOD's events, yeah. you know, especially if someone saw me as competition, because I don't think, no, we're all working in a very we friendly environment. Yeah, we have space to grow individually. And having the very best of Ghana, I mean, the musicians, that's another conversation because most of them are my friends. But having people from different fashion labels decide that we want to be part of it, and it's become the fashion event in Ghana. Yeah. You know, last year, as part of the year of return, we had musicians and, and fashion designers from the diaspora um, coming down to be part of the event. But this year, we went like 100% GH because wow. aside everything, um, because of COVID, we could not have... Um, um, musicians and, and, and designers from different parts of the, of, of the world. Wow. When it's all said and done, you have two girls. Yes. What would you want them to say about you when they are your age right now? He was very passionate about Ghana. Mm. And that's, that's me. I'm so passionate about Ghana. I mean, I actually get sad when I see people have conversations on party lines. Mm. What kind of country do you think they deserve to grow up in? A country where there's opportunity to grow. A country where, you know, there's, I mean, corruption's part of us, where there's no talk about corruption. A country where people want to see the projection of different aspects of industries, be it in the fashion industry. A country where there's so much reverence for the creative industry. A country where you don't get called because you're a musician because it's the end of year and we're having an end of year party. You know, a country where 
people would be giving so much reverence because they chose to work in the art space and, you know, elsewhere. See what the creative industry has done for America, for instance. See what um, the creative creative industry has done for, for India, Bollywood. It's, Even it's major. Nigeria. Can't we have that same reverence for um, people here? I get very sad when um, we appeal for funds for our musicians, our aging musicians, those guys should be enjoying so much. Yeah. You know, because look how Sofodazi, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, the turbulence of military regimes from the 70s through the 1980s saw these guys on TV entertaining the whole of Ghana. Super Odi should never beg for arms. Never. Should never beg. Mm -hmm. Should never be a pauper. Should never be supported by the industry. You know, they, they, they should live like the Stangs and um, um, what's the guy who said this is CNN? James mm -hmm. L. L. Whatever. Mm -hmm. That's how I'd want to see people in our creative space live in their old age. Do you think we failed them? I think we failed them. But then again, I think quite a number of people fail to do the right things when they are growing up. How? You're a musician and you're churning out great tunes and everyone's jumping to your music as a youngster. And you think, okay, if I got 10,000 today, I'll get 10,000 tomorrow. So you probably don't invest. Mm. Forgetting that once you work in the creative space, especially in a country where we don't really pay copyright as we ought to, you're only relevant today. And if you don't save that money, if you don't think about tomorrow, <clears throat> I, I, I think about, I'm, I'm that kind of person, I always think about the next person. Mm -hmm. So let's say this guy was very relevant five or 10 years ago and we don't hear of them. So how do they how survive? Do survive? How, how? How do they live? If they have children, how, how, do they, how do they go about it? How do they go about life? You know, you can only make it work for you if you get it right today. You can only make it work for you if you get it right today. KOD, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dee. And thank you for staying. I hope you've been inspired by his journey. And I, I couldn't have said that last line any better. Uh, there are some messages here, so let me read some before our viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, these are true heroes. All salute KOD. Hello, Jifa. Could KOD tell us his fondest memories of Nifa SHS? This is Bismarck, Accra, Newtown. Good morning. KOD is my brother from far. I can listen to him all day. Unfortunately, I don't have his number. Keep it up, bro. You have to con it all with your own radio station. <laughs> One of the most realest people I've ever met is this fine man in the studio right now, KOD. We draw so much inspiration from him and we pray he never stops. This is coming from Nana Kwache from WA. Thank you. Thank you very much. Over 24 years of services, no small mm. gain in that way. I'm sure you have more of yourself to give us. So thank you, KOD. Thank you very much. Hi there. We hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to subscribe. Like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily only on City TV.